Good afternoon. I'm going to be answering a question in this video. Very good question. How long am I supposed to get to know a person? Simple question, but not a very simple answer, actually. What is it that you seek? Do you seek a friend? Do you, speak a, uh, do you seek a spouse? What is it you seek? You, could, um, you can have a friend for over 20 years, and then circumstances or something happens where that friend that you once knew for 20 years will suddenly become a different person. A person, spirit, soul, and body. I've talked to people who have been married for well over 10 years before, and um, they're still, they still talk about, I'm learning new things about my wife or, excuse me, my husband every single day. Uh, when it comes to be uh, finding a helpmeet or a husband, whatever it is, you know, it's, uh, uh, well, how much time do you got? It depends, actually. It actually depends. What are you seeking? But as I like to do, what say the scriptures about this? What say the scriptures? Is there a set time for you to get to know a person before you can say that you know them? No. But see, that also greatly is decided by what kind of spirit is there. The spirit of the world or the spirit of Jesus Christ, God our Father. Because you see, you can have fellowship with uh, people uh, who you think are of the church of the living God and everybody around you um, has, has you know, the same mind, you know, the same spirit. But then there are those out there who don't. Why is that? Different spirit. The ultimate answer to this question is that it's a spiritual thing. Because you can get to know someone like the back of your hand. But are you of the same spirit? What fellowship hath light with darkness? You know what I'm saying? Get your authorized version of the scriptures. And turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures. To Proverbs chapter 18. We will be reading verses 15 on to the close of the chapter. Verse 24. Please follow me along in the scriptures. And I'm going to address you as though you are following me along. Okay? You got it? All right. Proverbs chapter 18. The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge. Oh, beginning at verse 15. And the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. Prudence. Wise. Wisdom. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Knowledge here is a result of being prudent. And one who is wise seeketh knowledge is also the result of wisdom. You fear the Lord, he, he will give you knowledge. And if you have understanding, which is departing from evil, you will have prudence. Hence, you will be given knowledge. A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. Uh, everybody's a friend who, uh, to someone who gives big gifts, right? <laughs> He that is first in his own cause seemeth just, but his neighbor cometh and searcheth him out. You know, sometimes it's good to have an outside set of eyes to look on something, to give you a perspective that you probably wouldn't come up with yourself because you have blinders on. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's good to get counsel other than your own. 
ultimately, where does your counsel come from? The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the scriptures. But see, he can use others to give you something when you're being a little too stubborn. The lot causeth contentions to cease, and parteth between the mighty. The lot, you know, they cast lots for his vesture. It's like, okay, I won, I get this. You know, heads, you know, you flip a coin, heads I win, tails you lose. Okay? <laughs> All right? So, they cast lots for something, and what does it do? And parteth between the mighty. Okay, we're going to cast lots for this stainless steel pen. And there are two guys who really vehemently want this stainless steel pen. Just an example, okay? And it's like, okay, let's find out. Flip a coin. Heads I win, tails you lose. Okay, tails you lose. Here you go. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle. Ugh. I recently have experienced this one myself. You know, those who know me um, uh, know that I've said that I thought that September was going to be a very trying month. Little did I know that it was going to be trying for us and our household. <laughs> wow, little did I know that. But it was true. <laughs> Gone through some crazy stuff this month. <laughs> There's a man up north of me who I think is a brother. But he and I have a problem with each other. Kind of like Paul and Barnabas. You know, Barnabas wanted to bring John Mark with him. Paul's like, no, 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 no. He skedaddled on us once before. Now isn't the time. But Barnabas like, come on, let's give him another chance. Paul's like, no, no, it's not ready. No, not now. Later on in the scriptures, he says, bring Mark who is profitable for me uh, to the ministry. Paul does, does say that. And he even gave good reviews, if you will, of Barnabas pa past that. But that contention over Mark was so sharp between them that they split asunder. Never worked with each other again. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle. See, with Paul and Barnabas, their contentions are like a bar are like the bars of a castle, hard as iron. Paul, no, it's not time. Don't we? No, we shouldn't trust. How can we trust them this soon? You know, now's not the time to take them. Let's let's go. Barnabas, hey, come on. Okay, yeah, he he dropped the ball. Come on, let's give him another chance. I could see Barnabas being like, hey, when everyone was scared of you, I came and searched you out, didn't I? Ooh. <laughs> right? And that contention between them, so sharp. Oh, say, and their contentions are like the bars of castle? As with me in this uh, brother up north. Uh, we have a problem with each other. We really do. And unfortunately, it's one of those things where it will not be settled down here. It'll be settled when we're up there at the judgment seat and with our Lord. And by the time we're with our Lord after the judgment seat, um, these little small trifles ain't going to mean nothing. Is possible. It is possible, and that kind of stuff does happen, brethren. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Now, these prosperity guys like to take verse 21, uh, 20 and 21 and blow it way out of context, okay? Um, James talked about, James. In the book of James, talk about how the tongue is a little member, but it causes it uh, is set on fire of hell. Sometimes it's better that uh, someone would come up to you and boom, punch you in the nose, 
then use their tongue and cut you with their words. This has nothing, verses 20 and 21, has nothing to do with the satanic metaphysical mind science of name it and claim it. Okay? Has nothing to do with it. Okay? It's talking about watch your mouth. Okay? Watch your mouth. Let your words be sweet. Okay? Let it be seasoned with grace. Okay? Because uh, how often, how often have you shot off at the mouth and have reaped quite a good harvest of fruit from it? You know, sometimes we just got to shut up. That says what uh, verses 20 and 21 are talking about in context. Let's read them. A man's belly shall be filled with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I have seen people verbally kill people. Verbally kill people. To where that individual had wished you would have gone up with the 357 and boom, shot him. That would have been a mercy to him. I have seen tongue lashings before where it would be better, it would have been better than for you to go up and boom, kick the guy in the stones than receiving that tongue lashing. I've seen it. I've been on the receiving end of such. And I have also dished, dished out such before. So have you. So have you. Warning. That's what this is about. Verses 21 and 20. Watch what you say. Especially when you don't know people enough. And erroneously trust them. And it comes back to bite you. We don't have the time for me to tell you all about that. Verse 22. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. There are many people out there who, wanna, who find a wife. But then, in a year, they're getting divorced. Why? Because they're usually, beg your pardon, uh, coming from the male perspective, usually they're thinking with the wrong head. And I beg your pardon for that crudeness, but sure get the point, don't you? And that is the gist of it. See, a lot of people think, when it comes to uh, getting married, they think what they see is what they're going to get. Or certain things happen going well. They've courted for about maybe six months. Next thing you know, they get married uh, in front of the judge or whatever, or the preacher. And then uh, so one of them goes, Something's got to change around here. <laughs> That's not funny because that happens. Or they're living in La La Land or something like that. Why? Because they're judging with their eyes. They might, they might even be judging with their heart. What are you supposed to judge by? Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. So, from the male perspective, if you find a wife, it's a good thing and it's from the Lord. I didn't look for my wife. I didn't. I did not go out seeking my wife. The Lord brought us together. He had his purposes. He had his reasons. But the Lord 
brought us together, without a doubt. And I know that for certain. Without a doubt. She knows it for certain. But see, you take the Lord out of the equation and just going off of what you see, what you feel in your heart, even. The ultimate deciding factor is what? The Lord. Ah. The poor useth entreaties, but the rich answereth, answereth roughly. Talk about stingy people. The poor, hey, can I have... Can I have a dollar so I can get some, some bread or something? Then the rich miser. Well, if I give you this, then that means I have to give other people uh, dollars as well. And also, too, I, 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 you know, if I, you don't become rich by spending, ah, shut up, go away. A man that hath friends must shew himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. There's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And that is true. You know, a brother is born for adversity. A man that hath friends must shew himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. The ultimate deciding factor is what? What spirit is there? What spirit is there there that is there? What do I mean? Go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter two, ver, uh, chapter three. Uh, Second Timothy chapter two. Beg your pardon. <laughs> verses nineteen under verse twenty-one. Second Timothy chapter two, verses nineteen under verse twenty-one. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal: the Lord knoweth them that are His, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ departeth from depart, excuse me, from iniquity. The Lord knows who are his. And what does it say there? Let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. You know, to have understanding, to depart from evil, prudence, that kind of thing. The Lord knows. Who's his are? He knows those of his own body. And the ultimate deciding factor of how long it takes to get to know someone, if you're of the church of the living God, the both of you are, um, that's up to the Lord. And if the Lord is the one bringing together, let not man cut asunder, put asunder, excuse me. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor, honor, gold and silver, and some to dishonor, wood and earth. Wood can be burned in the fire for fuel. Earth can be hardened in the kiln. Like potter, like pottery, earth can be hardened in the kiln, heated and shattered also. Earth, wood, things of the earth. Gold and silver, yes, also from the earth. But they can abide fire. And some to honor, gold and silver, and some to dishonor. Gold and silver signifying the, the riches that are of heaven. Because why? The Lord knoweth them that are his. But also of wood and stone, uh, wood and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Verse uh, nineteen: Let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart, Christ depart from iniquity. 
So you got the gold and silver signifying who's, whose is the Lord, whose is the Lord's, and departing from iniquity, signified here in verse 20 as the wood and earth. And it's also clarified by and some to honor and some to dishonor. Do you see that? If a man therefore purge himself from these things of the earth, Things that uh, of dishonor, uh, you know, purge himself, departing from iniquity. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. And let me tell you, sanctification takes a long time. It doesn't happen just like that. Okay. There are some out there who will struggle with many things. There are some out there who our Lord takes his time with. Okay? Our Lord took his time with me. Okay? Our Lord took his time with me in sanctifying, in sanctification, getting things cleaned up, getting things right according to the scriptures. It's taken a long time. Okay? And still ongoing. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. See, the ultimate deciding factor is the Lord. You could reach a point in a friendship um, where you get to know each other pretty well. But see, is it the same spirit? Is it the same spirit? That's the question. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And what ones are we going to be looking at? Which verses of Scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 are we going to be looking at? Uh-huh. For those of you who do not know, verses 14 on to the close of the chapter. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. The devils believe and tremble. Coadjutors believe and tremble. Yes, they do. Pond scum coadjutors that they are. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Look at that verse. Don't look at me. I will dwell in them. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit. If you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, a new creature in Christ Jesus... Jesus Christ dwells within you. And those things are come as a result of Christ dwelling within you. You know, the circumcision made without hands. Okay? He dwells within you. And I will be uh, I will dwell in them and walk in them. It doesn't say with them, it says in them. Don't look at me. Look at the verse. I will dwell in them and walk in in them. Don't go that way. Don't 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 touch that. Hey, want to bring somebody in? A little while. I'll show you afterwards why things happen like that. Oh, called retrospect. Mwah, gotta love retrospect. Don't touch that. Don't eat that. Walk in them. He'll teach you how to live in accordance with the scripture process of sanctification and also you see that guy yeah don't don't have anything to do with him walk away I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate saith the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you 
and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. But then again, remember, the Lord knoweth those who are his. And he, if you are saved, dwells within you. Okay? Verse 16, I will dwell in them and walk in them. Okay? The Lord is the one who ultimately decides. You as a saved person. How long can you have fellowship with uh, devils? It takes a really good devil, one who is highly trained to be able to pass off that he is of the church of the living God. I've met people like that. I've met really good devil coadjutors. I've met them. I know of them. Yes who can sit amongst saved people, hear the true gospel, but be lost as a blind man running a race. See, that's someone who is well-trained, well-refined, working for the Jesuit order. They themselves might not be Jesuits. Catholics, well, usually Catholic, but see, takes someone who is well-refined to pull it off for a long time. But like I said, like I always tell you, sooner or later, they shoot themselves in the foot. It always happens. Always happens. But the Lord knoweth those who are his. You can't get along with people who are not of the same spirit. Like when I have fellowship with uh, trusted brethren, it's, we're the same spirit. We're the same mind. You know, my best friend, our best friend, excuse me, same mind, same spirit. Same mind, same spirit. Someone whom I would trust with my own life and the life of my wife. Someone who I trust more so than anybody else. On earth, of course. Trust the Lord above all, of course. Should be, shouldn't have to say that. But when you come across someone who is not of the church of the living God, they can hide it. They can hide it. And, and, and dump a bombshell on you. But see, ye shall know them by their fruits, by the tactics that they are employing. Someone of the Church of the Living God is not going to use Jesuit tactics. It's, it, just, you don't do that. Okay? We are to be wise as serpents. Be aware of what the devils do. But as harmless as doves. We are not to fight like they do. And when you got someone saying that they're of the Church of the Living God and doing the same exact things that Jesuit coadjutors do. <laughs> Hey, buddy! <laughs> Shot yourself in your own foot there, <laughs> you know? Because what happens eventually when two opposing spirits try to get along over a period of time, really refined, good devil coadjutors can pull it off, but only for a period of time, not indefinitely. Why? Because the Lord knoweth those who are his. Go to Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3, verses 22 under verse 26. Mark chapter 3, verses 22 under verse 26. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub. <laughs> I'm sorry. Think of, thinking about uh, changing out the U for an O there. And Beelzebub. And by the prince of the devils, he casteth he out devils. And he called them unto him, and said unto them in parables, 
How can Satan cast out Satan? Now, now hold on. The Lord knoweth those who them, excuse me, them that are his. The Lord, if you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, uh, <laughs> you are of his body. The Lord knows you. Why? Because you're of his body. You have a living relationship with the living Lord. Okay? The living God. How can Satan cast out Satan? Ye do your works of your father, the devil. You know that Jesuits can play, will play on both sides of the fence? For example, during the uh, American uh, Civil War, there were Jesuits on the south and on the north. And there are Jesuits that were playing on both sides who shot at each other and killed one another. But see, there again, you got to remember, the end justifies the means unto the Jesuit. Okay? So if they die, get killed by their own Jesuit brother, uh, who's on the other side, they're, they're supposed to be cautious about that, but, you know, if they got to do it to pass off that they're uh, in cahoots with one besides the other, they'll do it. They'll do it. But see, ultimately... You can get two devils fighting with each other, but at the end of the day, see, these devils have the, that spirit of Antichrist that is in the world today. Okay? That spirit of Antichrist. And when someone has that spirit of Antichrist, yeah, that spirit of Antichrist is what? A spirit of pure hatred for that which is good, and there is none good but one, that is God. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And someone of that spirit of Antichrist, they're what? They're full of hate. So you get two people filled with that spirit of Antichrist trying to kill each other. It's the same spirit. The same spirit of hatred. And remember, God so loved, past tense, and gave. We as the church of the living God, we do have a spirit of love for one another. Why? Because he first loved us, loved us, therefore we ought to love the brethren. That's in 1 John. You go find it. Okay? So that spirit of Antichrist is a spirit of what? A spirit of hatred. Well, the spirit of the Lord is a spirit of love. Okay? And that doesn't mean that God loves you unconditionally. No, no, no. I've addressed that in videos before. But see, he first loved us. Hence, we therefore ought to love the brethren. Okay, now, let's continue. Verse 24. And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Verse 26. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. Those that are of this world, not of the church of the living God, they have that spirit of Antichrist. And when that man of sin, the son of perdition, is revealed after we, the church of the living God, are redeemed, those that have that spirit of Antichrist are going to fall in line just like ducks. Why? Because they are the same spirit. It is a spiritual issue, beloved. It is a spiritual issue. Let's, let's look at this a little bit uh, more deeply. Turn to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. So there's no simple answer to this. But the simple answer begins is, The Lord knoweth those who are his, them that are his, excuse me. 
If it is of the Lord, let not man put it asunder. If it is of the Lord, a brother is born for adversity. Okay, and there is a friend that sticketh closer to a brother than a brother. There have been people brought into our lives for just a moment. And then the Lord has taken them away. Not by death or anything. It's like just, you know, went, went our separate ways. That's happened before. No will will. Hey, hey. You know, just stop communication and whatever. And just, it happens. Okay, it happens. God will bring people into your life for a specific purpose. God will take them out of your life for a specific purpose. And when you got someone who's a fake, who you can't see, he'll take them out of your life and then show you, oh, wow, that guy's a filthy, stinking, pond scum coadjutor. See? The Lord is actually the ultimate deciding factor. Luke chapter 22. We are going to be reading from verses 19 on to verse 53. But we're going to kind of break it up a little bit. Okay? Luke chapter 19. We will read first verses 19 on to verse 23. But we're going to ultimately be reading on to verse 53. Follow me along. Okay? I'm going to do just a little expository stuff here. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it. And gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my flesh, which is shed for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And remember, that's Catholics. They, they love the flesh. Likewise also this cup after supper, likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my flesh. Blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me at, on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth, as it was determined. But woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to inquire among themselves, which of them it was that should do this thing? Hold your place here and go to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. John chapter 13. Verses 18 unto verse 30. The Lord knoweth them that are his. John 13, verses 18 on to verse 30. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. But that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it come, that when it has come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. When Jesus had th thus said, he was troubled in spirit, and testified, and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now, there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, John. Shimon Peter therefore beckoned to him, that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then, lying on Jesus' breast, saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Who is it who would betray you like this? Intentionally betray you. Intentionally. On purpose. Have I not chose you twelve? But one of you is a devil. Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop, S-O-P, 
already have done a video on that. So I'll, if I can remember these things, I'll link them in the description box. He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Shimon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Beg your pardon, excuse me. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. Now, no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. They went in retrospect. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, that Jesus had said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then rising, he then having received the sop, went immediately out. And it was night. That thou doest do quickly, betray him. Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus for what, 20 pieces of silver? Something like that? He betrayed God the Father for money. Purposely. Have I not chose you 12? One of you is the devil. Go back to Luke chapter 22. Picking up at verse 24. And we will be reading verses 24 on to verse 30. And there was also a strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. What is this? Yeah, there. Take your part. And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief as he that doth serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat? Get a load of this. But I am among you as he that serveth. God the Father our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, who washed the feet, the stinking feet of fishermen, came there to serve. How often do we lose the grasping on that? Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Verse 28, Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And by this time, Judas had already gone out. He received a sop. Satan entered into him. So he was talking on to the eleven. See. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Verses 1. On to verse 8. See, he said, ye are they who have continued with me in my temptations. What is that? That's called fellowship of the Spirit. Fellowship of the Spirit. What spirit is it? Is it the Spirit of God or that Spirit of Antichrist? Which, which spirit is it? Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 8. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ... If any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, 
if any bowels of mercies. Look at that verse. Comfort of love. Fellowship of the Spirit. Bowels of mercies. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded. Hmm. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Our Lord, we just hold, hold your place here and go back to Luke 22. Okay, go back to Luke 22. Let's look at this, okay? Let's look at this. Luke 22. Verses 27 and verse 28. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth? Is not he that sitteth, is not he that sitteth at meat? But I am among you as he that serveth. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. Back in Philippians chapter 2. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ. Consolation in Christ. If anyone's in Christ. God. Our Lord Jesus Christ. God our Father. The deciding factor. If any comfort of love. That comes from what? Consolation in Christ. If any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, that results from what? Constellation in Christ. If any bowels of mercies, again, how does that come about? Any consolation in Christ. Are they in Christ? Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, like-minded, having the same spirit, being like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. See, there's a schmaltzy love. And there is a true love. There is a true love. And the schmaltzy will only get you so far. Whereas the true love that is between the body will always be present in fellowship amongst those who are truly saved. The one who isn't, they'll either make themselves known or shoot themselves in the foot. Nonetheless, they will make themselves known. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, trying to outdo each other, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And you check verse 6 in some of the Bibles. They really just destroy this verse. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The flesh. You know, skin suit. And was made in the likeness of men. The likeness of men. But see, he didn't sin. But God was manifest in the flesh. In the likeness of men. But see, he did something that no mere man can do. He never sinned. But he was like us. He had bad breath, sweat, maybe had pimples. Maybe his feet stunk. Okay? Sweaty. 
<laughs> Maybe he bashed his head in so on something once or twice, fell down when he was a kid or something. He was like us. He was tempted. But God can't be tempted with evil. That's right. God can't be tempted to do evil, of course. But God in flesh can. Why? Because the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. See? And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Even the death of the cross. Verse 27 in Luke chapter 22. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat, but I am among you as he that serveth. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. Twelve. And see, Whatever your end is that you want, whether it be a friend, a spouse, a helpmeet, or a husband, is the Lord involved? How would you know? How would you know? How would you know? Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. That was a trick question, I beg your pardon. But back in Philippians chapter 2, again, verses 1 on verse 8. Let's read these again. Let's, let's get this sunk into our head. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, if any bowels and mercies, if I said of, beg your pardon. Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. <laughs> if the same spirit is there, you're going to be like-minded in one way or another. Even if you're a babe, okay, that like-mindedness. Why? Because it is the same spirit. People can quench the spirit. Why? By giving heed to their flesh. But even thus, those who are of the church of the living God, that same spirit, that same mind, like-mindedness is going to be there in some capacity. Even in brethren who have vehement disagreements with each other, which was based over flesh rather than spirit. It's the Lord who is the deciding factor. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. You know, if you're looking for a friend, the Lord is involved, the same spirit. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Our Lord brought our best friend into our life for a reason. And we are to esteem him better than ourselves. And we know why. Is the Lord seeking to put two together? Despite little discrepancies? Search the scriptures. How long do you get to know? Does it take? That's between the Lord and the person or persons. If the Lord is the author of it, you will know. And if not, sooner or later you will know. You need to seek the Lord. Because like I said, in a friendship, in a friendship, you could be friends with someone for 20 years. And then something weird happens and they do something out of character that you don't know. It's like, Wow, I've known you for 20 years. I never thought you'd do something like that. Things change like that. Marriage. I've only been married for nine years. I knew my, I've known my wife collectively for a very long time. For a very long time. We met when we were both lost. And 
like I said, we've known each other for quite a long time. And to this day, I, I'm still learning things new about my wife that I didn't know before. That is a process. But there is no like, okay, one year. You know, how, how long am I supposed to get to supposed to get to know a person? It's not like, okay, one year. The Lord's involved, it could be months. The Lord's involved, it can be decades. It is, if it is of the Lord, any consolation in Christ, if it is of the Lord, he'll bring things to pass. If, it, if you are of the same spirit, he will bring things to pass. If one is of the spirit of Christ, and one is of that spirit of Antichrist, they ain't gonna mess, okay? They might be able to get along with each other for a little while, but uh, something always comes up, something always happens, revealing true colors. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, man, flesh, and was made in the likeness of men. He was like us, only in that he never sinned. He couldn't sin. God, God cannot be tempted with evil. Or to do evil, excuse me. But God in flesh, the flesh can be tempted. Oh. Oh yeah, buddy. Oh yeah. As I alluded to earlier, there are people out there who get married because they see a hot looking woman. And she's and they talk and she's like, <laughs> kind of bubbly. Or they see a guy or a lady, excuse me, a woman sees a guy when you know dressed nicely with a nice watch and car got a little do re me turns out to be an abuser i've heard it said that sometimes it would be better for one to be blind than than to first judge upon what they see. Because someone who cannot see with their eyes, when you meet someone, how are you going to judge them? Not by what you see, right? You get what I'm saying? Sometimes what we see can deceive us. <laughs> Gee, yeah, go figure that one out, right? Verse 8, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. But see, I'll go back to Luke chapter 22, okay? But see, when it came to Judas Iscariot, our Lord wasn't fooled. He knew who it was. Have I, I, have I not chosen you twelve and one is a devil? made himself known while the Lord knew it all along, along. Why? Because he knows who he had chosen and the Lord knoweth those who are his. Let's continue now from verses 31 in Luke chapter 22 on to verse 38. And the Lord said, Shimon, Shimon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Now, why would the Lord say that to Pope Peter, <laughs> if Peter wasn't converted? If he was converted, excuse me, why would he say that? Uh, because Peter wasn't converted yet, was he? Oh, he... Be and he said unto him, Lord, 
I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. Verses 31. What was that? Matthew chapter 26, verses 31 on to verse 35. Matthew chapter 26, verses 31 on to verse 35. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. That's a quote from Zechariah. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Now, did they run? Were they scattered? Yeah, because scripture was fulfilled. Yes. Did they do that intentionally, as where Judas Iscariot did? No. These were the same that our Lord said in verse 28, Ye are they which have continued with me in thy temptations. But smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. Prophecy fulfilled in Zechariah, book of Zechariah. Go find it. Okay? Did they do that intentionally? They were told they were going to do it. You know, it's said that the way to hell is paved with good intentions. But see, the eleven continued with him in his temptations, where Judas Iscariot when he saw a good amount of money willing to betray God manifest in the flesh. He knew who he had chosen. The Lord knows those that are his. The ultimate deciding factor is the Lord. And was not his uh, ministry for three years? He had a three-year ministry. And in three years, they went through a whole lot, all of them. But when it came right down to it, at the end of the day, Judas betrayed Jesus Christ, God our Father, for mammon. While the rest of the disciples, while they did betray him, they denied him. They were like, whoa! They scattered. In fulfillment with prophecy. Peter the, the most. He, he did betray the Lord. He did. He denied him. But unlike Judas Iscariot, it wasn't with evil intent. It was out of fear of man. And the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Then again, you got to remember the fulfillment of prophecy that is in Zechariah about smiting the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. You see what I'm saying? Let's, conti let's continue. Verse 35. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and scrip and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Then said he unto them, But now he that hath a purse let him take it. And likewise his scrip. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you, 
that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, It is enough. Why does he say, But now, he that hath a purse, in verse 36, But now, why? Because up to this point, the King, our Lord Jesus Christ, was on earth offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. Okay? Israel. The Hebrews. Okay? He was offering the kingdom unto them. It was his time to go to the cross to make an atonement for sin. To die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures. And to shed his blood on the cross to atone for sin. Okay? The dispensation was coming to an end. Christ was going to be crucified. And while the king was on earth, he could miraculously provide for his people of his kingdom. But they didn't want it. They rejected him. Ultimately, of course, to go to the cross to make an atonement for sin, as it says here, uh, it makes mention of, uh, in verse 37 onto Isaiah chapter 53. Okay? The dispensation was changing. That's why he says, but now, before, as your king, I was going to provide for you. I could, you know, I'm God. I can do whatever I want. But now he's going to the cross. The dispensation is changing. See, you have to rightly divide the word of truth, people, or else you're going to have all kinds of problems. Let's continue. Go now to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Not 1 Corinthians, beg your pardon. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. I told you before and foretell you as if I were present the second time, and being absent now, I write to them which heretofore have sinned, and to all other, that if I come again, I will not spare. Since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you word is not weak, but is mighty in you. See, he through the Spirit was speaking into onto the Spirit that were in others. See, being like-minded, having the same Spirit. The words that come out are the words of the spirit the words of the scripture okay that's prophesying today uh, prophesying speaking through the spirit through the scriptures unto you and you receiving edification rebuke instruction correction that kind of thing see that's the fellowship of the spirit you see verse 4 for though he was crucified through weakness yet he liveth by the power of God for we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. See, Paul would, you know, people were questioning whether or not he was saved. Gee, never happened to me before. <laughs> but see, when he would speak, speak through the Spirit, speaking on to those who are also of the same Spirit. See, someone who is lost, trying to, who is an infiltrator or a coadjutor working for Rome, they're not going to, that, that same spirit is not going to be there, even though they can put on a really good facade. Very good facade, yes. It's not going to be there. Because the spirit within is going to communicate. Because it's one spirit, one God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, Okay? Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you? Except ye be reprobate. Paul is saying, look, I'm saved. I'm of the church of the living God. And he's speaking truth unto them. He's prophesying through the word. Okay? And for us today, to prophesy... The spirit that is within me, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit. 
speaks to you through the scriptures, through, the, through me. See, that's prophesying today. And Paul is saying in verse 5, hey, if you're not getting what the Spirit is saying through me, um, you need to check yourself whether or not you're saved. See? See, in 1 John chapter 4, you know, uh, uh, those who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is not of God, it's talking about those who prophesy, who teach, who speak, the word, okay? That's the context of it, okay? Devils can say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? But see, the test is for those who speak the word, who preach the word, okay? Because devils can say that. But those who are called to preach, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, And Paul says this about these people who were questioning him. In verse 5, examine yourselves. He was speaking of the Lord. And he knew it. He was sarcastic earlier on in the book of Corinthians. And I think I myself have the spirit of the Lord. He was being sarcastic. He knew he was saved. He knew where he was going. I know I'm saved. I know where I'm going. But he says unto you, those, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate? But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil. Not that we should appro appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates in the eyes of the world. The eyes of the world see us as reprobates, but we are not reprobates. You get what he's saying here? Do you? For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak, and ye are strong. And this also we wish, even your perfection. How can you be perfect today? You can't be sinlessly perfect. No. But your heart can be perfect with the Lord. And guess what? A perfect heart is a broken heart. A contrite heart. A broken and contrite spirit. A perfect heart is a heart that fears the Lord. You fear the Lord? So why is there no difference between what you do and what devil coadjutors do? Hmm. Is that spirit, the spirit of the Lord between the two of you? If it is, the Lord will bring things to pass or the Lord will <laughs> put things away. The Lord is the one who makes the decision if both are of the church of the living God. And look, if you're trying to seek friendship or a spouse outside of the Lord... Good luck with that! Verse 10. Therefore I write these things, being absent, lest being present I should use sharpness, according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification, not to destruction. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind... Live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with an holy kiss. All the saints salute you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Go back now to Luke chapter 22.
Luke chapter 22. We will be reading now verses 39 on to verse 53. Okay? And he came out and went, as he was wont, to the Mount of Olives. And his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise up and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Temptation. And elsewhere he says, Truly the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay? And while he yet spake, Behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? And Jesus knew this was going to happen. Psalm 55. Psalm 55. Psalm 55. Verses 9 on to verse 19. Psalm 55. Verses 9 on to verse 19. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and guile depart not from her streets. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me, that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man mine equal, my guide, and mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. Let death seize upon them and let them go down quick into hell. Quick, meaning fast. <laughs> or, excuse me, fast and alive. Alive into hell. Excuse me. Beg your pardon. This was the one I was talking about that a brother uh, um, corrected me on. Quick there is alive into hell. Okay? That's what that means. Beg your pardon for that. Let death seize upon them and let them go down quick, alive, into hell. For wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. Speedily recompense them, but let them go alive down into hell. Wow. Wow. Get a load of that. As for me, I will call upon God. Oh, let's wait. Let's read uh, verse 15 again. Let death seize upon them, and let them go down quick into hell, for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, Selah, because they have no changes. Therefore they fear not God. Let me ask you, did Judas fear God? Did he? 
Verse 48 in Luke chapter 22. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? And we know that Jesus gave him a sop and that Satan entered into him. What fellowship can uh, Christ have with Belial? Judas was with him for three years. Verse 13 in Psalm 55. But it was thou a man mine equal, my guide, and mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. Let death seize upon them and let them go down quick into hell. For wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. See, our Lord Jesus Christ was like us, that he experienced everything that you and I did, have or will, but he never sinned. Judas kissed God the Father. God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Kissed him. And handed him over to be betrayed. He was in he was like man. He was like us. How do you think God felt about that? How do you think God feels, Church of the Living God, when you give yourself over to your sin? How often do we betray the Lord? Well, Brad, I think betrayal is too hard of a word. Yeah? What would you call it? Oh, you're struggling, right? Call it what it is. When you, as a church of the living God, decide to give yourself over to sin, you decide, not at gunpoint, you decide. Are you not betraying the Lord? Why, uh, verse 49 in Luke chapter 22. When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. That was Peter. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders, which were come to him, Be ye come out as against the thief with swords and staves? When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretched forth no hands against me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. This is your hour and the power of darkness. Our time is ending. Your time you lost devils. Your time is quickly beginning. And note how he said in verse 51, Suffer ye thus far. Elsewhere it talks about those who live by the sword will die by the sword. See, we as the church of the living God, excuse me, beg your pardon, are not to fight like the devils do. And when someone is doing the exact same things as known devil coadjutors do, boop. <laughs> wow, it's pretty obvious. Even in the way we wage war, we are to be different. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And also too, 
Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7. In light of the, our Lord's betrayal by Judas Iscariot. Judas. Tway a style the son of man with kiss. Think about that, brethren. Think about that. He betrayed God the Father with a kiss. Were they the same spirit? Obviously not. Micah chapter 7, verses 5 on to verse 10. Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. How long am I supposed to get to know a person? Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. There's no set time, brother. Sister, there is no set time. Again, verse 7. Read it out loud with me. Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Verse 8. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. This is your hour in the power of darkness, remember. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me, he will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. Then she, mystery of Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, that is mine enemy, shall see it. And shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. There is no set time frame of how long it takes to get to know someone. I will tell you this, never rush it. And brethren, one of, one of my biggest faults that I have is I am naive. And I tend to trust people I should never trust. That is one of my biggest faults. I'm too willing to put my hand out there only to get it spit, spit upon. That is one of my faults. And I want you to learn from my mistakes. But ultimately, even, even if you can't see it, how long am I supposed to get to know a person? It's up to the Lord. That's up to the Lord. In all things, seek the Lord. What? Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. We all know this. But you know, we have to have patience. Ugh. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 on to verse 7. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Fear the Lord between the two of you. Whatever, if it's a friend you're sitting looking at, if, if you want a friend, 
the uh, a friend that sticks closer than a brother, beg your pardon, a spouse, a husband, or a wife? Seek the Lord. And during that time seeking the Lord, if you're if you if you are looking to get to know someone, whether for friendship or more than a spouse, enjoy each other. Speak often one with another. Okay? Those who feared the Lord spake often one with another, and the Lord heard, and a book of remembrance was written. Okay? Speak with one another. Talk with one another. Get to know one another by a daily thing. How long does that take? I don't know. The Lord does. If you seek Him, He'll let you know. Hopefully, this will answer that question for some of you. To how long? Because I know when you want a wife, speaking of course from the male perspective, you want it right now. You want a husband. You want a husband right now. More often than not, the Lord, whoa, chill. Wait a little while. I'll, I'll show you. Bring someone in. Is this it? Is this the one, Lord? Is this the one? For example, with me, never forget it. The Lord said to me, not audibly, but you know, those of you who are saved, you know what I'm talking about. Brad, you know that wife you've been bugging me for? There she is. No, yeah, that's your wife. Okay. Nine years later, So it's of the Lord. It is of the Lord. So, it's going to be it for this video. Got more videos coming. Big one. Very big one coming here pretty soon. Um, thank you, brethren, for all your prayers. Thank you so much for uh, your prayers and your fellowship, your love, your mercy, your kindness, your charity for us during this Hard month. Thank you, brethren. We love you. And we are your servants. Thank you, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.